Hello there, my name is Robin Warren and this is a presentation I did recently for a local Scrum user group on using Trello for a Scrum process. So a little bit about me, I was previously headed up the development team at a small software company so we had two Scrum teams there and since then in the last sort of 12 months I've been building a tool called Corello which is a dashboard for Scrum and Kanban teams using Trello. What that's allowed me to do is have a lot of conversations with teams using Trello and see how they're using Trello, see the problems they're having, see the solutions they've come up with and start getting an appreciation myself I think of what seem to be emerging as some of the best practices for how people are setting up their Trello boards and how they're using it for their, their Scrum teams. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this presentation. It's pretty short, so about 10 minutes. Um, this is what I'll be covering. So there's a little bit about how people are setting up their boards how people are using labels and dealing without the sort of subcards or subtasks that you don't have in Trello, uh, how people are using release management patterns and then a few useful plugins that I think are, are definitely worth checking out if you're using Trello for Scrum or Kanban. So board setup options, I mean not to dwell on it, this is kind of where everyone starts, sort of pretty basic, so you've got your to-do, doing and done. Um, in the middle here we've got sort of dev, code, review and test, you would have whatever your process is in the middle there in your sort of doing section. This is one of the first additions I see people making that so they have a ready for queues before those sort of sections in the middle. So what that lets you do is you know is you can look in your code review list if it's just one list and see a load of stuff in there but it doesn't tell you okay is stuff building up because it's taking a long time to code review or is it building up because it's ready for code review but nobody's doing it so what this lets you do is just sort of visually inspect that and get an idea of where things are building up in the process another thing I've seen people do which is very handy if you wanted to say remember what it was you did last sprint or two sprints or three sprints ago they'll have a, a new done list every single sprint so here I've just named it the date of the sprint but if you're using sprint names you could put that in there so at every time you start a new sprint you create a new done list the old ones move off to the right and then as the ones on the right become less relevant you can archive them or move them to a separate board in Trello so they're still accessible but you know they're not sort of cluttering up your board and finally over on the left what you'll see a lot of people doing is adding a notes list which just lets you put your you know your definition of done decisions from recent retrospectives links to style guides um, build, build machines wikis things like that and it's just nice because it's always there and immediately accessible for everyone who's working in the board and can serve as a useful reminder you know, especially with sort of decisions from retrospectives um, it's always there for people to sort of go and check out just briefly on the cards in Trello, if you know Trello well then this is not going to be anything new to you but some of the benefits here, so you're allowed to use Markdown pretty much everywhere so you can do a really nice job of formatting the descriptions and things, you can add upload attachments or attach things from Google Docs, um, Dropbox, all this kind of stuff um, and then yeah there's all the kind of stuff you'd expect, being able to assign members, um, add due dates, not so relevant on Scrum Teams but all that kind of stuff so we move on to how people are using labels and how they're dealing without the subtasks in Trello so first off this is probably a pretty typical setup I would see um, with people's boards for how they're using labels so the first label people would usually start with is bug um, normally red to help it stand out and obviously label all your bugs as red and then you can see where they are on the board and see how many you've got um, hanging around in to do or in, in your in your done lists. The next one people might add is urgent, whether that's relevant for you or not you can decide but just another way of flagging up tasks which aren't bugs but which are a bit of a priority at the moment. The third one which I've seen people using blocked as a list or blocked as a label. I prefer blocked as a label because it means you can mark it as blocked where it's blocked and you don't lose that information so if you've got 10 things in test but eight of them are blocked. It's nice and obvious that there's a load of work which has got to test and then suddenly got stuck. Um, possibly, you know, in that case, there's a problem with the test machines, and you know that needs to be go and be solved for the team. So those are sort of two or three that I think uh, a lot of teams would start out with, and is is often enough um, rather than adding a lot of labels for things like you know subtask and this is a a story, this is a something else, you know, all that kind of stuff, and you just end up spending too much time categorizing things. So next, the one big problem I think people often has is 
is wanting to split tasks up in Trello and have a kind of you know parent child relationship the two places where you really want to do that is epics and then the stories that make that epic up and then individual stories or cards and the sort of subtasks so when you get into a sprint and you do your planning session you okay well this story is going to require us to do these 20 things um, and having a way to sort of break those up but there are a couple solutions to those which seem to work um, pretty well for people I've seen people very happy with it and uh, might not be obvious up front but they actually work work very well so first off for uh, epics people seem to be using labels some people use lists for epics but then the problem is obviously when the card moves out of that list you've got no record that it was part of that epic or is part of that epic whereas with the labels that sort of sticks with it throughout its life um, and then for subtasks the best thing to do is checklists and this works I think excellently well to be honest so you can have um, marked down in the checklist here so I've created even sort of sub checklist here so I've got my two bolded headings with sort of sub levels and then I've just got some regular checklist items to be checked off so that works if you want to just sort of take a story and break it down into individual chunks but it's also useful if you want to have you can have multiple checklists so the testers and the devs can have their own sections if they want and you can also have checklist that you copy from another card so that notes list over on the left you can have template cards in there with say a checklist for a code review and then every task that you want to have a code review on you can immediately copy that checklist in and then everyone knows what they need to do and if you update that then obviously it gets updated on all future cards that you create um, and that yeah as far as subtasking goes I think works works really nicely to be honest so I'll just talk quickly about some of the release management patterns I've seen people using. So so far we've just had a board with the sort of a scrum board basically with no sort of backlog on there. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the plugins that are worth looking at. So the first obvious one is to add a single backlog list, prioritized and when the devs are sprint planning they can pull from the top of the backlog into their sprint backlog. The next thing to add I think is a two prioritized list. So it just stops people immediately logging everything straight into the top of the backlog and go into two prioritize and then product owner whoever is responsible can come along and move things from there into the backlog list whenever they whenever they have time up next would probably be release lists so here we've got like a version 2 or a version 2 1 if you're not continuously deploying or even if you are but you want to sort of track progress towards some notional grouping of of work you can have lists just labeled after those releases obviously move things from the backlog into there, devs can pull from the latest one when they're sprint planning and you can reprioritize cards in between them. The problem you have here is that we've already got four lists. If we had a notes list over on the left, suddenly we've got a lot of lists before we get to the ones where the work is actually happening. The majority of people using this board every day are obviously the team and they're gonna have to scroll over to the right to get to their lists. So the next thing to do is to create a separate board with all of this on for doing your release planning uh, move your cards about there maybe have a, a list over on the right called groomed and as you sort of pull cards out of the version 1.5 here into into the groom list and so that they're ready for the team you can then periodically send those cards over to the scrum board and the team can start pulling them into sprint backlogs there's an option in Trello to send an entire list to another board or individual cards or just take all the cards in one list and send them all over to another board so it makes that very simple to just sort of send things from one place to another so some useful plugins you should probably look out so Corello obviously so like I say it's a sort of dashboard and reporting layer over Trello for Agile teams. So you've got burn down charts, cumulative flow diagrams, it gives you cycle time stats, um, release burn ups, all this kind of stuff. You can get counts of bugs and now and historically. Um, yeah, so there's plenty of good stuff in there. There's Scrum for Trello, which lets you add story points to your cards. So that's compatible with Corello. The way Scrum for Trello does it is it just puts the numbers in brackets in the title. So if you if you put numbers in brackets in the title, Corello can pick that up as story points. But Scrum for Trello gives you a nice little UI for doing that, you know, with your Fibonacci sequence of numbers to click on. Uh, there's also Kanban Work in Progress or Card Count. There's two different plugins. So they're plugins for Chrome. Um, they let you set work in progress limits on your list. That won't show up in anything other than Chrome for anyone who hasn't got the 
uh, the the Chrome plugin, but it can be a useful way just to, if you want to set those limits up. And also Trello Business Class is worth checking out. It gives you some nice integrations to Slack and GitHub, as well as some other power ups, including the, there's a Corello power up that lets the team see the burn down chart directly in Trello without having to go off and, and log into Corello to go and see it. So that's it. If you've got any questions, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Robin Warren, or uh, my, there's an email address on the the Corello website. If you go to getcorello.com, I'm happy to answer any questions people have got about you know any issues you you found using Trello and just you know what I've seen other teams doing to to get around that. All right, thanks for listening.